This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. An Indianapolis man says this stretch of road is an accident waiting to happen. He's called the city numerous times and nothing has been done. Tonight, RTV6 takes his fears straight to the city. A mother on a mission to change drug labels after her son's death. The new effort underway to educate parents. A struggle many Hoosiers face keeping a bank account open. I'm Stephanie Wade with the dangers you need to know before taking your money here. We begin now at 6 on alert for pop-up storms on this steamy and humid day. We've seen some downpours already and the steam rising from the pavement in the aftermath. And the forecast is very important for a lot of people as fireworks start tonight in some places. Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is tracking the evening storm potential. We've already seen a lot coming through. Uh, I'll make a blanket statement from Indianapolis. Our I-70 north chances of evening thunderstorms are very low. They're much higher the farther south you go. To the radar, will move temperatures if you've had rain or in the 70s. Bloomington, for example, at 74. Otherwise, a sticky, steamy day with temperatures middle to upper 80s. Pretty easy to find the cluster of thunderstorms that we'll focus on here. Putting down heavy rainfall, there is a thunderstorm warning in effect for Monroe County, portions of Green and also Owen. That until 6.15, these thunderstorms pulse. They reach maturity as that heavy rain is dropping out. 60 mile per hour wind gusts are possible and you'll definitely get some localized flooding. We've had that in Southern Clay and in Shelby counties where we've had two to, in some cases, two and a half inches of rain this afternoon. There's the ball of lightning and the heaviest rainfall uh, just between Bloomfield and Bloomington, and it is torrential. I popped the lightning off and you'd be able to see it a little better. It just disappears because of the constant lightning associated with it. Feels like 91 in Lafayette, 92 in Peru. Temperature in Bloomington with a nearby thunderstorm just 74. We'll do more storm tracking. We'll unveil your fireworks forecast for tomorrow night. Look at the weekend coming up. An Indianapolis man says out of control grass and shrubs at the end of his street are blocking the view for drivers trying to get onto 16th Street. He says he has called the city numerous times, but nothing happens. Now he's asking RTV6 for help. RTV6 says Cameron Riddle is working for you and taking those concerns to the city. It's an annual problem for RJ Smith. The overgrown shrubs blocking the line of sight along 16th Street on the city's east side. That's not my property, although I tried to maintain it, but it's gotten too much now, and it affects being able to see. Smith has lived in his home on the corner of Coolidge and 16th for more than 20 years. He says for most of that time, he's maintained the shrubs that grow beyond his property line when the city doesn't. But as he ages, it's getting harder for him to maintain property city crews are supposed to be clearing. Unfortunately, I'm just not able to do it anymore. I can't believe somebody's not gotten hurt. Smith says he's no stranger to the mayor's action line. He's called numerous times, telling city officials the out of control grass is blocking the view of drivers trying to turn onto 16th Street. But so far, it's an ongoing battle. I think it was yesterday that I put the email into you. You called this morning, you know. They can't put a price on it, you know, that, uh, that you would respond like that. I would think that there would be resources in the city that somebody could at least give me a phone call. At the top of Smith's fears are the people who have to walk down the street with no sidewalk to use. He says this stretch of road is an accident waiting to happen. Some of the cars are, are pretty low, and so you don't see them in the weeds, so you have to pull out very slow. Smith wants the city to know he's not just complaining because he wants something done. He's speaking out in hopes of preventing a tragedy. It's not about me. Um, no, I'm just trying to, trying to help. In Indianapolis, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Cameron, thanks. And we sent pictures of the intersection to the Department of Public Works asking what could be done to make it easier to see at that location. We will let you know when we learn what the city plans to do. Now a traffic alert that could impact your travel later this month. dot plans to close all lanes of southbound I-65 from the south split to I-465 starting July 12 at 9 p.m. All lanes will reopen July 22nd by 6 a.m. Then all lanes of I-70 east and west 
westbound will close from I-465 on the west side to the south split on July 26th at 9 p.m. They will reopen on Monday, August 5th by 6 a.m. Tonight, there's a push to change drug labels, and at the center of that effort, an Indiana mother who lost her son in 2013. He was a Purdue student, and his mom says he was suffering from side effects from a popular antibiotic. Call 6 Investigates Kara Kenny has been tracking concerns surrounding the drugs for four years now. She explains what this new effort means for you. This citizen's petition was filed on June 17th. It's calling for drug label changes for fluoroquinolones, which are popular antibiotics used to treat infections. Shay was a very creative person. Um, he was very bright. Heather McCarthy is a mother on a mission. She wants people to know what happened to her son Shay, a Purdue student. He took the antibiotic Levaquin, and his mom says Shay was never the same. He dropped out of school. He wasn't even leaving his bedroom. Um, he started having issues with depression, just very much out of character. Shea died in 2013 after he jumped out of a second story window, got into his car and crashed into a wall. Heather supports a citizen petition just filed with the FDA to add a black box warning to Leviquin for psychiatric adverse reactions, including suicide. He was a strong young man. He wanted to be better. So it's, it, for me as a parent, I don't like to use that word because this could have been avoided. This didn't need to happen. He didn't need to go through this. And the suffering that he endured, this was a young man who wanted to live. The drugs already have many warnings on them, including for tendon rupture. In the newly filed petition, the Southern Network for Adverse Reactions is also asking for a fluoroquinolone associated disability black box warning, which includes a cluster of disabling symptoms. Heather believes Shea suffered from it, and she says when he tried to tell his doctors, they didn't believe him. So, so often the um, medical professionals give that no credence. Dr. Charles Bennett with Sonar submitted the citizen petition. This is serious. We want this in the black box warning. The drug maker Janssen is no longer making Levaquin, but it's still in pharmacies and people are still taking it. Bennett says millions of people in the United States are using generic versions. This petition could impact the labels for all fluoroquinolones. We fully expect if the petitions up uh, responded to positively, that it will be across the board. Heather says she will testify before the FDA if asked and talk about what happened to Shay in the hopes of helping others. He can't speak out now. He's gone, but I can. We reached out to the FDA and they say they are reviewing this petition. Kara Kenny, RTV6. And we also reached out to the makers of Levaquin and we're still waiting on a comment on the petition. The FDA says that for serious bacterial infections like pneumonia, the benefits of fluoroquinolones outweigh the risks. The FDA does not recommend taking the drugs for infections like UTIs, bronchitis and sinusitis. It is way too easy to rack up credit card debt and keeping a bank account open is a struggle for many Hoosiers. RTV6's Stephanie Wade explains how quickly fees can add up and resources that can help in our community. Living paycheck to paycheck, experts say people can often run that bank account down to zero. And that's when you enter the danger zone of racking up late fees. Let's talk a little bit about your goals. It's a daunting task. Pay off, you know, one or two things at a time. Tackling and paying off debt. Maybe 3% of it for now. But folks who need help with their finances can come here to the Community Alliance on the Far East Side. Kyra Bowerman is a teacher. She has a job and two degrees. But even so. I did realize that. I needed some financial help with financial planning. She says her problems began with credit cards. Getting one was very easy, and that was the problem. At, at 18, who is going to give 18 year old with no income a credit card? And everybody does. Without a steady income at the time, she didn't realize she was only hurting her credit score, unable to pay her credit card every month. I didn't feel the effects until it's time for me to go try and get an apartment. Well, now I have this debt and I can't get an apartment because, or I have to pay X amount of dollars more because of this credit that I had. Then what happens is you not only have one, but then you have two, and then you get approved for a third one. 
then that's where the money management comes into play. Kim Taylor is a financial coach and helps clients like Kyra budget, set goals, and build their credit. There are more fees that are put onto the consumer uh, more so today than there have been in the past. While there are more fees, which is the nasty cycle some fall into, Taylor says there are also more resources to support the consumer if you know how to navigate the system. I would say not understanding the process and then they don't talk to the banking uh, institution and figure out how do I rectify this. Taylor says repairing your finances often involves readjusting your lifestyle and working within the budget you have, but becoming debt free is achievable. Well, there's people out there to, to help, so just uh, you have to just reach out. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Thank you, Stephanie. And the financial coach recommends beginning with a low limit credit card to start out building your credit. If you have debt, try to identify areas in your life where you can cut expenses or pick up another job. They create specific plans for you. The Community Alliance on the Far East Side also offers rent assistance, utility assistance, senior services, employment, and income coaching. Still ahead here on RTV 6 News at 6, getting your kids ready for the working world as they enter kindergarten. Plus, staking a claim for a spot on the Carmel Parade parade route, but the city might be looking at ways to control the real early birds. The cars they're in and the track they race on might be small, but their dreams are certainly big. Later in sports, the future stars of racing are inside the Speedway this weekend. We'll have a closer look at the battle at the Brickyard. Lots of lightning and torrential rainfall between Bloomfield and Bloomington. That's the strongest storm we're tracking now. I'll show you other storms and the impact for tonight through tomorrow night coming up. Tie my shoes. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Hiring Hoosiers is the RTV6 initiative that works to connect you to jobs, resources, training, and education. And today's story is proof you're never too young to learn about the workforce and what it takes to get hired, run a business, and even pay off loans. Junior Achievements BizTown helps kids from kindergarten to high school learn about financial literacy, work readiness, entrepreneurship, and philanthropy. At their summer camp, kids ages 9 to 12 are honing those skills plus soft skills needed to succeed as adults. Alyssa Andis, the VP of Education, says the earlier kids learn these skills while having fun, the better. I think we see that students are not coming out of high school with those skills and, and employers are having a hard time finding the right hire. It's important to be on time. Um, it's important to be respectful. Those, those small things that are kind of those life skills that aren't being taught every day are really are the most important part of maintaining a job. And so I think it's incredibly important that we teach that as early as kindergarten. If this camp sounds like something your child would be interested in, there are two more sessions taking place in Indianapolis this summer. The first is July 15th to the 19th. The second is July 22nd through the 26th. J.A. BizTown also offers scholarships so all kids are able to attend camp. You can find all this info on HiringHoosiers.com. Fourth of July will take on a whole new meaning this year for 98 people who became U.S. citizens today at a ceremony in Indianapolis. The annual 4th of July naturalization ceremony took place at the Jim Benjamin Harrison home with federal senior judge Sarah Evans Barker presiding. The 98 new citizens came from 31 countries, including Afghanistan, China, Nigeria, Mexico, Guatemala, Israel, Italy, and Vietnam. One new citizen we spoke to came to the U.S. from Egypt and just graduated from Carmel High School. It's a great thing to be uh, an American citizen. Um, I moved here five years ago and I wanted to be a citizen. I waited this whole time. Uh, I didn't know English. I learned it in school. And uh, I'm glad that I'm a citizen right now. And I'm grateful. His next step is to attend IUPUI with a goal toward becoming a dentist. This week, the U.S. will welcome 7,000 new citizens in naturalization ceremonies across the country.
And everyone will have a chance to enjoy the holiday with fireworks displays all over the state. The largest display in central Indiana will take place tomorrow night during the IPL Downtown Freedom Fest. Fireworks will shoot from the top of the region's bank starting at 10 p.m. The RTV6 drone flew over the top of the bank building today. You can see the fireworks are all covered and ready to go there. So grab a spot early at the Indiana War Memorial Grounds to watch all the action tomorrow. And in Carmel, celebrating the 4th also means a parade, and many residents have already staked out their favorite spots along the parade route. Just take a look. Carmel City Council President Jeff Worrell said he learned of people staking their claims as early as June 22nd. There's nothing illegal about doing it, but the city might look at ways to control it. Worrell is working on a proposal to take to the council about a possible ordinance that would make people wait two days before the parade to set out their seats. Look for Kevin, Mark, and me in the Carmel Fest Parade tomorrow. Tomorrow at, and it starts at 10.30. Hopefully we'll no be rain. waving. Hopefully no rain. And I've got the candy. 10.30 sharp if people have been waiting that long, right? We may even roll early if we're in uh, position. Thunderstorm chances low tomorrow. There are very high anywhere from Terre Haute to Greensburg South this evening. That's the most likely spot for thunderstorms. The thunderstorm warning for those of you west of Bloomington to uh, portions of Green and Clay County has expired. We have no thunderstorm warnings at this time. We do have flash flood warnings. Southern Clay, northern portions then of Green and western portions of Monroe and then Shelby counties. I just want to show you some of the estimated rainfall amounts, 2.7 inches southern clay, 2 inches or so now in uh, northeastern green, and then over 2 inches in Shelby County. In some cases, this is still a work in progress, especially for those of you northern green and northern Monroe counties. As far as our thunderstorms, we'll zoom in. Watch how the lightning really shrinks here in the last little bit as this drifts between Bloomington and Bloomfield. What this does, it pulses, maybe a 45-minute storm at at its peak has the potential to produce 60 mile per hour wind gusts and quarter size hail, but it's also collapsing at that point, just dumping the heavy rain out. That's what's ongoing there, and that's why the flood warning has been extended and pushes a little more to the south. As we look at the big picture, any severe threat tonight, again, isolated severe storms as we go through the early evening hours before sunset. Temperatures over the next several days, warm tomorrow and Friday. As we get to Saturday, thunderstorms are likely we begin to cool a little bit and the humidity will drop, but not until then. These are heat index values. It might be overdoing it on Friday with thunderstorms around. Notice Friday and Saturday, the most likely time for more widespread thunderstorms. As we get to Sunday and Monday, even Tuesday, we begin to dry out. That's the good news. Fourth of July, let's talk fireworks. This is for tomorrow night. Let's assume around 10 o'clock isolated thunderstorms. Most of us will be in good shape. It will be warm, sticky, 80 degrees. You could have a situation where you set up your chair, put it in the ground, and it sinks a little bit because the ground is soft from thunderstorms tonight or tomorrow. Temperatures consistently in the upper 80s. The wind is light. That's why when these thunderstorms develop, they don't really move. They sit in place, rain themselves out, and then the next develops kind of down the road. Same situation tomorrow, although I don't think it's widespread. And right now, our true cast kind of confirming that. But anytime we get to the early afternoon hours during the heat of the day, that's when these bubble up. Thunderstorms are likely Friday afternoon and Saturday. Sunday, rain chances diminish. It feels better, less humid, cooler Monday. Still dry Tuesday and likely dry on Wednesday. That is your forecast. Getting a break there. Yes. All right. Thanks, Kevin, for that. All right. We have Brad Brown standing by, and it looks like we're talking about the Pacers some more today, Brad. Indeed. Making some more moves as free agency continues, and it looks like the next edition will be T.J. McConnell, ESPN, reporting he has agreed to a two-year deal with Indiana. McConnell averaged 19 minutes a game off the bench with the Philadelphia 76ers last season, scoring six points per game. Pacers would be adding more depth at guard with this one. Again, free agent signings won't be made official until Saturday. And good evening, everyone. The Pacers leave for Las Vegas tomorrow. That would be the Summer League Pacers. Their first game is Saturday. This particular squad has a fair amount of experience, but for several guys, that professional playing time has come overseas. Such is the case for 26-year-old Devon Akun Purcell. He's the oldest of the Pacers' 14 Summer League players. Went to college at Illinois State, but since then, he played in Denmark for two years, in Israel, and in France, and he had a two-way contract previously with the Nuggets. But now, He's getting his shot with the Pacers. Yeah, I actually like it. I think we're going to be pretty good. Um, we've been real aggressive. I mean, defensively, offensively, everybody's catching on really quick, and it seems like it's going to be a great summer league for us. 
Devon is six foot five, 200 pounds, plays a bit of guard and forward. We'll see if he's able to make a mark in the week ahead. Next year, NASCAR will be racing at the Speedway on the 4th of July weekend, but this year some future stars of racing are get a chance to make some indie memories of their own. It's the annual USAC Battle at the Brickyard set up inside the Speedway. 160 kids ages 5 to 14 are racing quarter midget carts around the smaller oval set up at the tracks north end. They have a road course set up for the weekend as well. IndyCar drivers Alexander Rossi and Connor Daly were on hand for today's opening practices. The IndyCar guys talked to the youngsters about getting that first love for the sport. Going out and, and having the opportunity where I was encouraged to go challenge and fight for wins and um, I think that's, that's what I fell in love with and um, that's still kind of my mentality to this day and when I see that in a lot of the kids I was like oh are you excited about today and they're like well if I win it's like all right that's awesome. When indeed Rossi's the honorary grand marshal today we saw him waving the green flag on practice racing continues out there all weekend. NHRA driver Steve Torrance already has six top fuel wins this season a dominating showing by the defending world champ but he is giving a ton of credit to his crew for getting it done right here nearby in Brownsburg. Tonight at 11 we will show you how the Capco guys are gearing Torrance toward another title. That's in our Sports Extra Spotlight. And the American women's soccer team will face the Netherlands on Sunday in the World Cup Final. Local fans will have a trio of opportunities to get together and cheer on Team USA. The Indy 11 is hosting three watch parties for Sunday's Women's World Cup Final. It's at City Market in downtown Indy, at the Union Jack Pub in Broad Ripple, and at Carmel's Midtown Plaza on the Monot. All three parties are outdoors, so we'll keep an eye on the weather for that, but the match starts Sunday at 11 a.m. Show up with your red, white, and blue. Back to finish up tonight's News at 6, next. Sunday, Ashley Home Store, now open in Whitestown. Our stretch of four straight days at 90 or above has ended, and our streak of eight straight days without rainfall in Indianapolis. Now, I know many spots have had rain, but Indy hadn't in the last eight days. There's your heaviest rainfall, Bloomington, back south of Sullivan, then also between Bedford and Seymour. Any of these may produce 40 mile per hour wind gusts and certainly an inch plus of rain. And those thunderclaps have been very loud. Yes, they have. Well, we will see you at 7 with more on this forecast.